For this lesson will examine the standard normal distribution, also called the Z distribution. Remind ourselves of the bell curve. We have the mean right in the middle. We have 68% of the data within one standard deviation of the mean. Notice 34 and 34 is about 68. We have 94% of the data within two standard deviations of the mean. And we have 99.7% of the data within three standard deviations of the mean. For a general bell curve, the mean could be anything and the standard deviation could be anything. But in a standard normal, we have certain requirements. Namely that the mean is 0 and the standard deviation is 1. So recognize 0 is right in the middle. 1 is at the point of inflection on this side. Negative 1 is at the point of inflection on that side. And then it extends beyond. And notice there's not much data beyond negative 3, beyond 3. Remember, of course, 99.7% of the data is within three standard deviations of the mean, which means 99.7% of the z-scores will be between negative 3 and positive 3. So here's how we write these probabilities. The probability z is between negative 1 and 1. Between one standard deviation of the mean will be about 68%. Probability z is between negative 2 and 2 is about 95%. And the probability z is between negative 3 and 3 is about 99.7% of the data. So let's take a look at how we can see this. So using this applet available from Stanford, we can find that the shaded area which is the probability between negative 1, the number here is negative 1, the number here is positive 1. The probability between negative 1 and positive 1 is indeed pretty close to 68%. So let's go to that applet and let's try some other things that we can do with that. Okay, if I put a 0 in and go left, the probability we're to the left of 0 is 0.5. No surprise, half of the data is to the left of 0, half is greater than 0. The area under the curve, the entire area under the curve is 1. And that's going to make it what we call a probability density function. So again, let's take a look between negative 1 and positive 1. If we go between negative 1 and positive 1, we get our 68%. If we go between negative 2 and positive 2, you would expect it to be about 95%. And it is 0.9544. And if we go between negative 3 and positive 3, we get, again, about 99.7%. We can also go to the left of a number or to the right of a number. Let's say I want to the left of the number negative 1.37. To the left of the number, what does the applet give me? 0.0853. Notice here is negative 1.37. We're finding the area to the left. 0.0853. If I want the area to the right of a number, let's say I want the area to the right of the number 1.2. The area to the right of the number 1.2 would be 0 0.1151. So this is a nice applet for us to use to determine probabilities for the standard normal distribution. So here's a fairly typical question. We want the probability z is less than negative 1.52. So what does that represent? We have our z-score here, negative 1.52. And we want that little itty-bitty piece of area to the left of negative 1.52. So if we go to the applet, We'll put negative 1.52 here, and we'll get rid of that one. And we'll say we're going to the left of negative 1.52. And it gives me 0 0.064255, or about 0 0.0643. So the probability z is less than negative 1.52 is about 0 0.0643. So about 6% of the graph is to the left of that negative 1.52. You can also check that on Minitab. Here's the command that we're going to use, CDF, which stands for Cumulative Distribution Function. We are saying CDF negative 1.52, normal 0, 1, mean of 0, standard deviation of 1. This makes it a standard normal. So again, notice the output says normal with a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. The probability x is less than or equal to that x. Probability x is less than or equal to negative uh, 1.52 is 0 0.064255 or 0 0.0643. And the way we write that is we use the letter z to represent a standard normal distribution. So the probability z is less than negative 1.52 will be 0 0.0643, thanks to Minitab. OK. 
Our next question is going to be the probability z is less than 2.06. And I've got the answer here, which is 0 0.9803. And let's see where we get that. So we're going to go back to the applet, and we'll take a look at that. So we want z to be less than 2.06. So I'm going to get rid of this negative 1.52. And I'm going to put in 2.06. We're going to ask for the number to the left of that. Put 2.06 in the left one. And it gives me 0.9803. So indeed, the probability that z is less than 2.06 is 0.9803. So 2.06 is here, where the arrow is pointing everything to the left 98% of the data. So indeed, the probability z is less than 2.06 is 0.9803. And here's how we ask Minitab to do that. We say CDF 2.06, normal 0, 1. So again, normal with a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. And this is going to give me the 2.06 yields a probability of 0.9803. So the probability z is less than 2.06 is indeed 0.9803. Now we want this question. We want the probability z is between negative 1.52 and 2.06, which is very easy to use the applet to solve the answer. So let's go ahead and do that. So we can use negative 1.52 here. And we can use 2.06 here. And we can just ask for the number between. And that gives me my answer of 0 0.9160. But generally speaking, we want to be using elements of probability to solve this. So we're going to want to break this up into a couple different pieces. Namely, the probability z is to the left of 2.06 minus the probability z is to the left of negative 1.52. So let me show you how to do that. So this will simply be the probability that z is less than 2.06 minus the probability z is less than negative 1.52 in between those two. So we found those answers earlier, 0.9803 minus 0.0643. And indeed, we get our answer of 0.9160. And comparing that to the applet, we have, again, 0.9160. Our next question is going to be the probability z is greater than 1.28. So going back to the applet, z is greater than 1.28. So we want it to the right so we'll put 1.28 here we are looking for the area to the right of that so let's see what we have here here's 1.28 how much area is to the right of 1.28 the applet is giving us 0 0.1003 0 0.1003 so we'll keep that in mind as we try to solve the problem so probability z is greater than 1.28. It'll be 1 minus the probability z is less than 1.28. Why is that? Well, we're using the complement rule. I don't need to worry about equals because the probability z equals 1.28 will be 0. This is a continuous random variable, and you'll never be exactly 1.28000000. And how do we get the probability z is less than 1.28? Well, we can use Minitab to do that using our CDF command. So here I'm going to say CDF, 1.28, semicolon, normal, 0, 1. And that'll give me the number. So the number it gives me is 8997. This is the probability Z is less than 1.28. CDF always gives me the less than probability rather than the greater than probability. So we have 1 minus the probability z is less than 1.28, which will be 1 minus 0.8997. That, of course, was the number that we received from Minitab. Subtracting those two, our final result is 0.1003. And this concludes this presentation.